What's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. I am with my buddy Hawk here at the Upstate Canine Academy. Today we have a video with a dog. I mean, this is a really big behavioral breakdown video for anybody out there that is interested about learning more about dog behavior and just kind of watching how things evolve. This particular dog has some of the worst reactivity I've ever seen on the leash. And the way that he's consistent with his reactivity considering some of the things and some of the exercises we put him through is pretty interesting. So in this video, we're breaking down behavior, reactivity, he goes after every dog we put in front of them consistently for a couple days. Without further ado, we're gonna roll into this video. If you guys haven't yet, consider subscribing to my channel right now. We put videos out like this every single week, sometimes two to three times, maybe once a week. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get into this video. Subscribe to my channel. Let's go, guys. So we have some pretty severe dog reactivity, and then we also um, were hoping you could teach us more about getting heel down because we've mm. been practicing, but it's... So he'll heal for a second and then he's right back at it. And so okay. Explain to me a little bit about the reactivity. Is it with every dog or is it only on the leash? Yeah, or? You, like when the dogs, the previous dogs came out to their car, he went absolutely ballistic. Car. It's really just fixation. He'll go after them. I think he's kind of afraid of other dogs, to be honest. But I think his first reaction is, you know, well, I'm going to go after them so they don't come after me. This is that when we see a dog, he's just he'll ch he'll choke himself right through it. Yeah. So I always feel kind of bad. So slow down a little bit. Good. Slow down. Good. Hard to tell like if he's paying attention or not. That's why I was telling you to slow down because if like, if you're walking just as fast as he is or keeping up with him, it's hard to tell whether or not he's paying attention or if you're just keeping up with him. It's because he's not really healing. You're just keeping up with him, making you know, and then all of a sudden you turn and he's gone. So you're really just like staying with him and that's why he's not capturing the heel that well probably i'll try to go slow okay. yeah yep. so stop for a second sit sit ah, ah, ah. nope sit. good good sit my goal with him is to make him confident enough to be on the leash with you guys to not feel like he has to react to make his life a lot less stressful and yours obi come good boy sit good sit good so just watch his behavior, right? He's like, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh God, what are we doing? There's dogs. And like you said, this is the first time you've had him next to another dog since you've had him or whatever. So this is big for him. Yes, buddy, well done. So he gets confidence back into himself with the control that we're establishing here. And that's, I think that was just, we just didn't know how to achieve that. Like, mm -hmm. like we want him to feel confident. We know that he needs to feel like he's not in charge. Exactly. So to break it down is he sees the dog and he's like, I'll handle it and he you know and he comes out and he reacts and he gets all puff chested and he's barking and the way the way that he's doing it is like rah, 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 rah. like he's not confident about the bark at all he's just like he has to react so he builds up he goes like this and he starts to react and then I go and I disrupt it and then he goes down and then he's like it's kind of like the videos you see where the kid thinks he's drowning and he's in like two feet of water and he's like six feet tall, right? And then he stands up and he's like, oh, it's not so bad. That's essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm putting the flashlight on the boogeyman here. Is he's like, hey, there's dogs. This is what we do. This is what, this is how we react. Quite a touch. Good. So then you pay him for that. Good job, Hopes. Good. But see how he's like not so interested in the food. So if you just watch his behavior, this is all we're doing is we're figuring out the core. Why is he reactive? Quarter. Seats. So in this situation, see how he's starting to build? So what I would do, just block him off a little bit, calm him down. Good, Obi, sit. Good sit, buddy. Obi, heal. Good heal, bud. So he sees Lakota and he's like, he can't believe his own eyes. He doesn't know what to do. So hear him? <laughs> That's where you start breaking him away. So it's kind of like a pot of water that's on heat. As soon as you start to see it simmer, you want to remove him from the heat before it boils over. Move this way. So when he starts to build, if you have an opportunity, all you can do is remove, good. Or counter with some obedience. So you come out, Obi heel. Yes, good heel. And then you'd pay him, yeah, buddy. One thing you could do in the future, and I'm trying to make this as efficient, as effective as possible for you guys, you could use the 280C Vibrate, which is an e-collar vibrate. So it just goes, what, me? 
Because sometimes when you're dealing with a dog that is like this and they're so honed in, you can't physically get them out of it. They're just locked in. Mm -hmm. So the e-collar is really great for that. It's like your iPhone, a little bit more intense. So it's like, brrr. if an iPhone was like, brrr. this is like, brrr. so when you tell him to leave it and he's like, you can hit the iPhone. Brrr. So it's a discouragement, but it's also a disruptor. Good. And just, yep. And just keep redirecting him. Just, yep. Keep, keep moving. Good. Good, now just go the other way. Yep, there you go, nice. Watch his behavior as she moves around. Go to left. Good left. So see how he's taking that information in and thinking about it versus reacting. Where before, he would just react, he would explode. Hawk in his little holding tank here. All right, so now I wanna go over a little behavior here. So give him a little break. He's engaged, he's looking at Hawk, he doesn't really know what to do. He's, ah, ah, ah. Leave it. Good, so he simmer, 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 boil. What you're looking for is, and the hawk's a neutral dog right now because he's enclosed, he's not really paying attention, he's not reacting. He's just investigating here. This is a dog who just doesn't know what he wants to do. Good, come here buddy. Good job. Good, so I'm just taking hawk's face and I'm kind of just pulling it away for an opportunity for him to get a sniff in. He's nervous. He doesn't know what to do. And I'm not correcting him because he just doesn't know what to do. He's very stiff. It's not in a mean way at all. He's just, good boy, figure it out, buddy. Well done, good man. Hey, hey. He's waiting for eye contact. So if Hawk were to look at him, that's where he'd have a hard time. Good, so watch, okay? So as soon as his face goes here, good, yes. Good, yes, good. Good man. Good, Obi. Obi, yes, good boy. Leave it. No. I wanna try the vibrate on the e-collar. I wanna try to knock out the bad behaviors that we're getting. Obi, come here. Good boy. So instead of any physical correction, we're just gonna use the e-collar as a vibrate. Good man. Good, good boy. Leave it. So he started the, yes, good. So he started the build there. His lips, leave it. Yes, buddy, good. When you get physically tense and then somebody physically touches you, that's where he was exploding before. He's like, okay, he's not looking at me, he's not looking at me. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that, I'm fine with that. Oh God, he's looking at me, what do I do? And then he gets, good man, good decision. This is all face to face, good. And you can see his, his mouth is involuntarily moving because he's nervous. Like when you're cold, you can't help but shiver. Good boy. Good, so I'm just paying him for not reacting there. Making this experience with another dog as positive as possible. And you could see he's good. So, so he literally is focused like this. And then if he builds, good. So leave it. Like it's, good. Not, it's not you pulling him back. It's just this thing that happened. Exactly, exactly. So as soon as, it's brilliant, because as soon as he starts to do something I don't like, it turns on. So it's not gonna have any negative association with him because he's still here right now and it's not on at all. Good man. Good boy, Hawken. Good, leave it. Good, good. It was so much less effective. We would go to a dog park and have and feed him treats like when he would take it to us, but we did it how many times? And it didn't really make any difference. So yeah. So interesting, he's so much closer and he's so much calmer. Yes, because you're missing the factor of punishment. You're missing the factor of correction. You're missing the factor of being able to diverge him off to something else. So if you're just paying him when he doesn't react, that's only half the picture. So when he reacts, you just remove yourself. It doesn't help with that. So that's why this is helping and it's so much more effective. How long did you try that for? Months. Months? And this is the closest? Yeah, 100%. Okay. It's not necessarily me. It's just the fact that I'm, I'm trialing different things to see what's gonna work best for him. I think when we were doing it, we sort of knew that it wasn't working because we were doing it for months and if we weren't saying we changed. It's not just you guys trying months on that. It's millions of other people missing that one equation. And a lot of times people do say, okay, we gotta, we gotta do something different, but what do we do? And I don't know what to do until, you know, we're starting to figure it out here. Yes, buddy, good boy, good avoidance. So it's just a process. And I don't ever know what's gonna work best, but my goal is just to change his overall perspective up here about other dogs where he's, good man, good boy. He's more interested in his bone now. Good, down. Good job, guys, good. Good man, good boy, yes! That was wonderful. 
That was really, really good. I want him to feel different about another dog. And judging by the behavior that he was giving me before, he wasn't really, he's not aggressive. He's not mean, he doesn't not like other dogs. He just doesn't know how to get used to another dog. He doesn't know that the meet and greet process for him is not something he's comfortable with. So he's either fight or flight. He's either like, we're either out or I'm just gonna growl at you until you go away. But I've helped him bridge that gap to make him Ah, but not so bad. That correction is what helped him get over that hump. And the correction is literally an iPhone. <laughs> Vibrate. Brrr. That's it. Yes, good. Yes, good boy. So lots of positive reinforcement, lots of it. More positive reinforcement than anything else. It's everything that you guys have been doing just with the ability to discourage him from the behavior with actual enforcement. Because dogs aren't like, oh, you're, you're upset with me? Okay, I'll stop barking. Because with him, he's just so like, right? And he just gets explosive. There's no talking at that point. You can't just say, hey, how about we uh, instead, you know, it'd be really great if, we... it doesn't work like that. Dogs just don't care about it. And it's just, like I said before, doesn't hurt him, doesn't shock him, doesn't give him anything other than getting him out of that state of mind as he's doing it. It's an aversive because he doesn't like it. He wants it to shut off. But the thing is, is it, the timing of that is perfect. You're never gonna get any different timing. And what you guys were doing was something a lot of people struggle with is you're only doing half of the quadrants of just giving him that positive reinforcement when he doesn't. Because that's the thing is like, when you counter condition, it only gets you so much. So when he starts to react, pull him away. You bring him up, he reacts, you pull him away. You pull him up, he reacts, you pull him away. But if you're not teaching him something, it's like a kid taking a test and never teaching them, here's the right answer, man. That's wrong, this is right. You're just like, oh, nope, try again. Oh, nope, try again. Oh, nope, try again. And so that's where that came in, is where he's like, okay, okay. And he gets worked up and then all of a sudden he explodes. And then he looks at the dog, yes, good, no reaction. So he's like, wow, this is a lot better. Much more relaxed kind of learning too, which I think. You're hitting it right where it matters. Like if there's a fire in the kitchen, you're not like throwing milk and fire extinguishers next to the fire, you're right on it, right where it's happening. So it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a lot less stressful trying to put out a fire next to the fire, right? So when he's coming up and he starts to build and then he explodes and you're just like, you got a little teaspoon like th throwing water on it, like it's not good. Like pulling him out is, is one way, but for so many people, it just doesn't work. Like he's never going to learn that what he's doing is wrong. So absolutely, his learning process is going to be faster and the entire process for him is gonna be less stressful, quicker. Adding something to, to the equation, right? over what we don't like. It's literally the same template that we use for positive reinforcement training, just for behaviors we wanna discourage. Positive reinforcement over behaviors we want to stick for them to be there. Positive punishment over behaviors we wanna discourage. We want them out. Just how positive reinforcement works really good for a lot of shaping behaviors, creating behavior, capturing behaviors, positive punishment is just as valuable and as powerful and you don't have to beat around the bush for six, seven, eight months. Just putting the fire out right where it's at and not dancing around it. I, know, I feel like that's what we're kind of doing is we're just kind of like walking around with a bucket of water waiting for the fire to go out and come tell them. I have a lot of tools in my toolbox. So when you hire a mechanic or a plumber or anybody to show up to help you with the job and they're like, oh, I only brought my wrench. You're like, that's it? But when I show up, I have so many different things in my toolbox. I flip through like, Let's figure out what fits, right? Like a stylist. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Let's do that. And it's not about how I feel or even how you guys feel. It's about how he's perceiving this information and what works best for him to get him to that other side.